Welcome to the La Casa de Cristo Sermon Cast. This sermon is titled, When Life is Hard, Rejoice, by Pastor Jeff Ruby, dated October 6th, 2024. You're going to see up on the screens a couple pictures here. These are pictures of garbage that are on top of Mount Everest, the highest mountain on earth. Since it was first conquered in 1953, 4,000 people have ascended to the summit, but along with those ascents, there has come garbage. Oxygen bottles, plastic wrappers, food wrappers, discarded equipment, a variety of things. It's estimated there's four to 8,000 tons of trash on top of Mount Everest. And the government of Nepal, in addition to the normal fees that are charged to lead an expedition there, has now charged an extra $4,000, which is refundable if you bring back as much garbage that you possibly can, not just your own, but the garbage that is already there. I show you those pictures because we all have garbage in our lives. Maybe the garbage was from growing up. Maybe you grew up in a dysfunctional family. Maybe the garbage comes because of your own mistakes in life, your own brokenness, your own sinfulness. Maybe the garbage comes from others imposing things on us, perhaps an ex-spouse or a family member or a close friend. But whatever garbage we have, we need to hear again the words that Sharon read for us in this most famous passage of all, one of my most favorite passages in all of Scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone, because the Lord is near. And have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, make your requests known to God. And God will grant you that peace that surpasses human understanding. We need to understand that when Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians, which was a divided and conflicted church, he was in prison, awaiting certain death in Rome. And yet, despite having been tortured and beaten and awaiting certain death, he writes, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. And what we want to talk about today is to understand that when life is hard, when life is difficult, we as believers are still called to rejoice, as difficult as that may be. Now you may say, well, Pastor, how is that? How can we rejoice when life is hard? I've got this going on in my life. And, and, and so the first point I want to make is this is, are you going to rejoice in the Lord or are you going to rejoice in a precarious future? You're going to trust in your health? That can change with one doctor's report. Are you going to trust in money and your savings and assets? If you're working, that can change with one layoff. If you're retired, it can change with inflation. Or it can change with a recession or inflation. What, indeed, are you going to trust in? Are you going to trust in others? People are fickle. They will let us down. They are human, as are we. Are we going to trust in world peace? looks a little shaky right now. Will we trust in what happens after November 5th? The reality is whoever is elected will have to face a lot of challenges, and they inherit a divided population, deeply contentious. So who do we place our trust in? You see, when we see where Paul was and what he did, he is a model for us of understanding that even in tough times, whatever you're going through right now, that we can rejoice in the Lord. Because what's the alternative? Is the alternative to rejoice in yourself or circumstances or your precarious future, or is it something better than that? 
Now, I've always loved the humorous story that is told of the faithful lady who, who taught a lesson to an atheist. Uh, she lived in this house, and every morning she would walk out on her front porch, and she would say, it's a beautiful morning, praise the Lord. And the atheist neighbor would shout back, there is no God. And this got quite dicey and contentious over the, a few weeks, because every morning she'd walk out and say, Praise the Lord, and he'd shout back, there is no God. Well, finally, one morning, she walked out, and this lady lived very simply, and, and she shouted out, praise the Lord, but Lord, I'm a little short on money this month, so I need groceries. Can you help me with that? And the atheist hears this, and he says, aha, I know how to trap this lady. So that night, he goes to the grocery store, buys a couple bags of groceries, and early the next morning, he puts it by her front door. She comes out. She says, praise the God. Praise God, you know, rejoice in him. He's provided for me in so many ways. And look, he's even provided food. And the atheist jumped out and said, aha, I told you there is no God. I bought those groceries and she didn't miss a beat. She said, thank you, Jesus. Not only did you send me groceries, but you made a fool pay for them. <laughs> so the reality is, is that we rejoice in the Lord always. But why? Why? There's a saying, and I'd like to alter it a little bit for the Christian, that everything will work out in the end. And if it doesn't work out, it's not the end. But even for the Christian, when the end of our life comes, there is the promise of eternal life. In the Bible study I'm leading on Daniel, Wednesday evenings and Thursday mornings, we shared in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace this week. And one of the things that was shared is this. Once they figured out that they trusted in God, once they figured out that the worst thing that could happen to them was death, and that even if they died, they were a child of God, then everything else was okay. They could do what they had to do because everything was in perspective. And you and I need to know this as well. We don't believe in a God who is like an armchair general, safe behind the lines while everyone else is facing the battle up front. We believe in a God who sent his son, who knows us, who lived like us, who has all of our emotions, pain, suffering, joy, tears, all of that. He is in the trenches with us. And when we know that and understand that, then we can truly echo the words of Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Who and what are you going to trust in? It's all very precarious, except for God. And then secondly, we need to understand something else about this passage. Too many Christians get caught up in believing that the sum total of our existence is about praying to God to make our lives easy. God, take this away from me. God, take this challenge away from me. God, remove this from me. You know what? It didn't happen for Paul. He prayed to God many times that God would take away the thorn in his flesh. We don't know what that thorn was. It could have been a bum leg. It could have been depression. It could have been a speech impediment. But God never removed it from him. And yet Paul remained faithful. We are not to pray for an easy life. We are to pray for the strength to meet the challenges of our life. And every person that you read about in Scripture, every woman, every man, that is true. This is not some Pollyannish statement of Paul. This is not some fairy tale. This is not some wishful thinking. Life is difficult. Life is hard. But in the midst of it, there is hope. And so we pray for the strength to meet those challenges, not for an easy life. As we gather on this day, as we go out into a world full of uncertainty, as we go into lives that are uncertain. Maybe some of you right now are finding it hard to rejoice in the Lord. But who and what are you going to trust in? And how are you going to understand your life, if not, but faith in Jesus Christ? He is the one who will see us through all things. He is the one who saw the Israelites through the Red Sea. And yes, they had to wander then. 
for 40 years till they got to the promised land. We too will wander. We too will struggle. There will be seemingly dead ends and detours, and there will be backtracking. But in all of that, he walks with you and me. On this day and every day, may we heed these words of Scripture. And may we know and understand this, that these were, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Were written by a man in prison who had been beaten and tortured and spat upon and was facing death. And still he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. And that puts it in perspective for all of us. Amen.